Hello, my name is David, and on February 17th, 2018, I released my animated short film, God's Leash. This short was a long time coming, and this behind the scenes video will look into my creative process. The story, the art, the themes, everything. I started work on this short immediately after coming home from watching Blade Runner 2049 in the cinema. I love that film. It's up there with some of my favourites. I was so inspired I started drawing and writing for my own cyberpunk animation. That was in October. I was still working on No Monsters and had no time to start a new short film. But that didn't stop me from drawing and writing. I knew the short was going to be sci-fi, so I got to work drawing anything that would come to mind. A lot of my early drawings included this character. I called her Edgy Sombra, who eventually became Sally. Some of my other drawings included full-on robots. This was before I had any idea what the short was really going to be about, seeing as robots aren't a thing in the finished animation. It wasn't until I drew this, a variation on Edgy Sombra, with a pet dinosaur, where my ideas really started to become more streamlined. Going back to the original Edgy Sombra, this gibberish on our coat is what Google Translate told me the word control looks like in Japanese. I knew control was going to be a central theme to this short, even from the beginning. I drew a lot of inspiration from other older drawings of mine too, like this Feinliner sketch. This drawing was actually concept artwork for my dystopian series, but it far better fits this universe. The corporation slash conglomerate Don't Think was completely carried over too. Before writing, I really wanted to start with a theme I could relate to, a point to it all. This was easy. Comfort. Comfort and control. I decided to centre the short around the nature of control. Control, being free, and the numbness of being overly comfortable in a controlled environment. Initially, I planned this short to take place in a utopian world, taking a complete departure from my dystopian shorts. Where everyone is happy, everyone has their place, there is no disease, we control everything, everyone's safe, we live long lives. I wanted to play on the idea of how numb being that comfortable would be, that some people wouldn't want to just live warm and complacent. We need ups and downs. You have to struggle through bad times for the good times to mean anything. The comforts of safety and how boring all of that is. Some of that was dropped, but a lot of it did survive. Eventually I drew this, and at that point all my disconnected ideas really started to form together. I wrote a broad outline for the story. It was split up into four parts. Jogging through the havens, walking through the streets, a talk with the cheese, and fighting in the havens. Reading through this, it's nearly exactly the same as the final product. It's honestly kinda striking how little the story changed over the four to five months I was working on this short. I even made little notes of the narration. It's almost the exact same. The story is of a woman named Sally. She has a pet Deinonychus, a small theropod dinosaur implanted with a chip to make it docile. She lives in a futuristic society obsessed with control. The human race has become obsessed with perverting nature and overcoming God with technology. The world is comfortable, controlled and safe, so much in fact that Sally dreams of escaping it. She's become numb and longs for a life where she can earn her right to survive, and not just live for the sake of living. Sally wants to feel alive. She dreams of escaping to the Havens, small islands of unruled land the human race has left free. The Havens are places where animals still breed, it still gets cold and lightning so strikes. Human beings are not allowed there. Sally and her dinosaur finally make it to the Havens. Sally has removed all of her implants, everything unnatural, and disables the chip in her Deinonychus. The animal immediately tries to tear her to pieces, because leaving the safety of control, the world is unpredictable and dangerous. A brutal fight ensues. Sally wins the fight, bloodied and bruised. It's cold, she feels sick, nearly dying. She just had to fight for her very survival against a dangerous animal which should be extinct. She's killed it. Sally then breaks down in euphoria because she finally feels alive. The world is harsh, unpredictable, and she has struggled, but that means she's finally living. Certain movies, books, and video games influenced the story of this short. Obviously Blade Runner 2049 was a huge influence to get me started, but the story ended up very different from that film. It's also worth noting that I listened to a lot of sci-fi audiobooks while animating this short. Books that include the two Jurassic Park novels, Ready Player One, Do Android Stream of Electric Sheep, and Ubik. I'm not sure how much any of those really influenced the short, but I did choose them specifically for their relevance to the genre. A lot of the presentation was actually inspired by the Wolfenstein reboots, specifically the music choice and the narration. Comparing the two, you'll see what I mean. Strange sensation. Trapped in my body. 
I black out. I'm losing time. Sometimes the seasons change in the blink of an eye. But other than that, there really wasn't one big source of inspiration. I really just wanted to craft my own personal chunk of alternative sci-fi. The look of this short, The World, I spent a lot of time on, with a lot of frustration. I knew exactly what I wanted from the Havens, immediately. Natural woodland with a mid-autumn look. Melting snow, orange trees, and a colour palette I'd probably describe as fiery cold. That stuff was easy. The city human stuff was a lot harder. Initially I wanted a very cyberpunk-esque aesthetic. I love the cyberpunk aesthetic. Deep blacks, wet, and neon. Low life, high tech. Problem was, collecting research, cyberpunk is derivative as hell. I couldn't tell you which of these images is from which franchise. Cyberpunk cityscapes at least always look the same. I wanted my world to be warm, sandy, and in the daylight. Still with all the tropes, low life, high tech, neon lights and rain, just with an earthy feel. It took a long time of experimenting with minimalism, colour and so on, but I finally decided on this sandy Art Nouveau look. A mix of traditional brickwork, wood and plant life, and tech wires, billboards, and neon lights. Whether my short can be classed as cyberpunk, I have no idea. I think if the city scene was set at night time, it absolutely would. But I don't know. Sally went through quite a few developments. Initially she was Edry Sombra, but when it came to modelling her, I just really didn't like the hair. I quickly drew this up, and way preferred this design. Some interesting trivia about Sally, aesthetically she's a bit of a self-insert. No, I'm not a slender woman with a buzz cut, but I am bald. She wears the same clothes and I have two pets. One's a lizard, and the other's a cat. The cat's called Scarlet. Her bedroom is modelled after mine too. She even owns my Papu T-Rex and my whiteboard. Her personality is completely different from mine of course. She's not a complete self-insert, but hey, it's just the look. I love dinosaurs. When I got the opportunity to put a dinosaur in this short, I honestly got quite excited. Dinosaurs appear in a lot of my animation work, and when they're not straight up dinosaurs, they're things shaped like dinosaurs. What I'm showing you right now are a bunch of unfinished animations over the years, all featuring some kind of dinosaur. Like a zombie dinosaur, a paper dinosaur, and that lodgings episode I never released. Hell, even Odin's dragon design looks particularly dinosaurish. My dinosaur obsession's pretty bad. I own every Papo dinosaur figure to date, I collect them. I also draw dinosaurs all the time, here's one, and here's another. I'm particularly proud of this giant painting, depicting a Displatosaurus and a Styracosaurus, Predator Prey. Pay no attention to the hole in the canvas. I'm also working on a super accurate Tyrannosaurus Rex sculpture at the moment, but none of this is relevant and I've rambled for too long, I just love dinosaurs. Well it's a little bit relevant, point is, I had a lot of fun designing and animating this raptor. I wanted her to be relatively scientifically accurate for once which meant fluffy. I also needed to choose a dinosaur that was around the size of a very large dog. Dangerous, but could reasonably be killed by a human being with a sharp stick. I chose to base her off of a Deinonychus, a dromaeosaur that's instantly recognisable as a raptor and totally fits the size and look I was going for. There were five posters slash paintings I had to design for this short. The first being the Not Your Faults poster. This was based on a sketch I did of Edgy Sombra very early in development of this short, which I never finished and was kind of ruined as you can see. But the idea I still loved, and eventually developed into what you see in the animation. The second poster being Control, I drew up from scratch for the short. I like this one, I think it kind of stands on its own. And the third being this three piece painting, depicting man over god. This whole painting was based on the sketch I mentioned earlier. The colour and composition of these pictures was based on the Wolfenstein reboot posters, as you can tell. Striking, oppressive and red. The middle image depicts three business people, dark silhouettes standing over God who is powerless splayed on a barren earth. On the left we have a man controlling the weather, a sailboat caught in the storm to be saved. And on the right, a woman resurrecting the dead, a decrepit church in ruin. This painting illustrates the bald guy's beliefs, and by extension the whole society's. The man has overcome God. God is on their leash. The animation style in this is exactly the same as my recent animated shorts. 3D cell shaded character models in a world composed of 2D transparent planes. The 3D animation is done in Blender, and the backdrops are painted in Photoshop. If I were to move the camera, the illusion is completely destroyed. I've covered this a lot in my other videos, so I really don't think I can add much else. I had to create three different versions of Sally for this short, and multiple variations on those. Jogging Sally, Clothed Sally, and Naked Sally. 
Originally I had her fight the dinosaur completely nude. In fact, it was one of the first things I wrote down while working on this short. Woman completely naked fights dinosaur to the death. It made for an extremely striking, almost biblical image, but I don't know. I think I was just combining two of my favourite things. I did decide against it, not because of the impending age restriction, but because it just, just kind of looked stupid. Sally's character model is actually a repurposed tracer model I made for an Overwatch animation that I never finished. I just tweaked her a little and removed the hair. Her jogging outfit is nearly the exact same as the tracer model I made. I'm glad as well because I worked really hard on that rig. As for the voice work, Sally was voiced again by the lovely Adrian Cox, who did voice work for my previous anime short No Monsters. And Rachel Hazar? I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Played the city announcer. As for the bald dude in the Don't Think ad, that was me. But I secretly voice another character. I did all the voice work for Scarlet, the dinosaur. Every single noise she made came from me, and they're completely unaltered. I couldn't find any dinosaur sound effects on the internet that I was satisfied with, so I decided to make them myself. Here's a glimpse into my ongoing insanity. <laughs> My cat is looking at me so weird right now. By the way, this isn't the first time I voiced a dinosaur. This is also me. Yeah. This short was a monumental amount of work. It's twice as long as my average animation and it felt it. The actual animation and painting process, the part that takes the most time, was insane. Which is why I bought so many audiobooks. Besides Parallel, which I worked on for around 11 months, this has been my biggest project. I have to admit, balancing this and college was hell, and I'm glad it's done. I'm also very glad I did it, I, I, I like this thing. This short film is very close to my heart. Not only is the main character slightly based on me, lives in my room, has my cat, but the short encompasses nearly all of my favourite things. Dinosaurs, sci-fi, fitness, and nature. It also encompasses a lot of my fears. The dangers of being too comfortable, feeling numb and too safe, avoiding the unpredictable and the fear of control, or lack thereof. Human nature and our weird obsession with controlling everything. It's also very edgy, this short. Edgy and pretentious. But I like that, a lot of my stuff's edgy and pretentious. This short is about control. This is a society that controls everything. We've advanced to the point where humanity has technologically overcome God. Everything natural is under our control. People live to unnatural lengths, there is no disease, you are free to modify your body and person as you see fit, perverting nature. We control the weather, there are no natural disasters. Animals and plants are bred and grown for the needs of humanity, nothing more. And all are fitted with implants. We've brought back long dead animals too. Animals nature selected for extinction. We brought them back and turned them into house pets, again fitted with implants, making them docile. For everything must be comfortable and safe. The whole world is a warm and steady 21 degrees Celsius, the optimal comfortable room temperature. So it all feels like nothing. Being so complacent in a world of comfort and control is numbing, even frustrating to some. Sally doesn't want to just live for the sake of living, experiencing day after day safe and warm. She wants to fight and survive, in a world where nights can get cold, where she could get sick and earn her own survival. She could die. When you remove all of our obsessive safety nets, the world could and likely will try to tear you to pieces. But because Sally is taking a risk, stepping into the unpredictable and dangerous, she's finally alive. The good without the bad means nothing. Sally is bloodied and beaten, cold and nauseous, but she's finally living. She's feeling something. She's free, and it's horrible, and amazing, and most importantly uncertain. But that's why it's great. I hope you guys enjoyed this behind the scenes look into God's leash. I don't know, it's, it's just amazing that I've got a group of people who genuinely care about what I do. I aspire to be a filmmaker and it's just amazing to have a group of people out there that actually care about the films I make. Thank you all so much, seriously, and goodbye for now.